So let's yeah. just snap our fingers and say the whole world's vaccinated tomorrow. Does that mean COVID would pretty much fizzle out really shortly? Yeah, so it's got nowhere to go. A really interesting way to frame this is that a lot of our political understanding comes from a Western political tradition, which felt that it had conquered nature. So once conquering nature, it then worked on the problems of human nature. So some of the ways of that was political science in the West. And, you know, so you look at this idea of a Hobbesian, you know, universe where everything was like dangerous in, in, in nature. And we felt that we'd conquered nature. So modernity was based on this foundation where we've conquered nature. So then we work on things like human freedom, equality. These are the problems of human nature. Mm. What's happening with the pandemic, and I believe what's also going to be, this is where the pandemic is a, is a portal into the next world, uh, is that the environment too, is that we have now the return of nature. And nature does not care less about your human freedom. So we're moving back into, uh, and back into what humans have struggled with throughout history, which is the return of nature. So for example... We know that coronavirus has sort of originated um, in bats and somewhere in Hubei, Hubei province there were bats. And there's a whole bunch of arguments whether that was you know, gain of function research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, um, but the original thing came from bats. So that's called a, a virus reservoir. So a virus reservoir is where the, the virus can circulate and then can jump across. So most of the, a lot of the pandemics we have in the world come from an animal reservoir and then we'll jump across into humans. So Ebola and stuff like this was, you know, people in Africa eating bushmeat and stuff like that and jumps across to humans. So you have human reservoirs. So basically what happens is uh, you have the virus is continually trying to infect everyone and it's evolving and adapting the whole time. Now, sometimes it will burn out. Um, but for example, what happened with Delta is in India, it was like continually trying. And then it, 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 a new better variant came, which was more transmissible and began to affect more people. And we saw that instantly the effects in the world as Delta uh, happened. Uh, and so there's different things in a, in a virus. There's things it's transmissibly, transmissibility, there's severity, and then there's vaccine escape. Delta is maybe a little bit severe. We're not more sure. It could be the same, but it was more transmissible. Right. The nightmare scenario is we get a more transmissible, a more deadly, and a vaccine escape. And there is a significant chance of that happening. So wow. when you've got a large group of unvaccinated people, so things like smallpox and so on, we vaccinated that sort of almost out of existence, right. uh, polio and stuff like this, because the world was slowly vaccinated and that disappears. And what we know is that the vaccines are probably going to have to have boosters in six months because they do weigh in with efficacy. Um, that um, you, um, just as you know, there's a new flu jab every year um, or flu shot. Uh, So part of the argument of you do your thing, I'll do mine, that's an argument that's not coming from epidemiology. That's coming from people looking at a political framework of we'll deal with this as a problem of human nature. That's your belief, that's mine. But what, what we're entering into now is this world where reality is returning in the form of nature, where there's consequential decisions uh -huh. that we just can't agree to disagree on. So you're saying as long as there's a significant number of people who aren't vaccinated, you're just opening up many more doors for more variants to be created, possibly a very deadly variant, not just a more contagious one. Like, yeah, the Delta is more contagious, yes. hasn't yet seen to be more deadly, I don't think. But you're saying we can have another variant that could be way worse. And, yes. And and if the so let's yes. just snap our fingers and say the whole world's vaccinated tomorrow, then does that mean it would COVID would pretty much fizzle out, fizzle out within a I mean really shortly. Yeah, so it's got nowhere to go. There is always the slight danger that it could go into an animal reservoir. And just, to, this is, I mean, this is a bizarre thing, mate. They did testing on deer in Michigan recently, and like deers are, are raging with coronavirus. So it is jumping into animal reservoirs. But, you know, it, it would pretty much sort of disappear in the world if everyone's vaccinated.
what about when they get when natural not, immunity? Like they get it, they live through it, yes. they have T cell immunity. Is that the same as being vaccinated in terms of what we're talking about yes. here of, of contracting it and spreading it? There is elements. The problem we have with, with um, natural immunity is that it wavers. So there are people who are getting COVID more than once. And what we know is that the vaccines are probably going to have to have boosters in six months because they do weigh in with efficacy. They do weigh in. Just as you know, there's a new flu shot. Every year. It would pretty much sort of disappear in the world if everyone's vaccinated.